Hey guys, it's Knight with Midnight Games Online. Welcome to another 1212 AD Siege Battle. We have a two versus two for you today with some big factions. So we're gonna get right into the army compositions here. We're gonna start with the Teutonic Order controlled by yours truly, Knight. This is the Grand Master of the Teutonic Order. And this battle is a late era battle. So we do have a lot of 15th century units wearing 15th century armor on the battlefield. Those are the latest units available in 1212 AD. This is the Grand Master of the Teutonic Order and his knights of his bodyguard. And they are wearing 15th century armor. Going through the rest of the Teutonic Order's army, we have the cavalry or Ritterbrunner knights. Very cool looking unit. And a couple more of those over here. Going through the rest of the army of the Teutonic Order, we have some Albert or Pavi spears. So very heavy spears, big shields. Going to be hard for missile units to take care of them unless they do have gunpowder. Some more spears here in the siege tower. And a fourth spear unit there. As well as looks like three melee sword units. These are the 15th century Sam Ladder swords medium melee sword unit. We can, most of them are in the tower, but we can kind of see one of them here. And we have three of those units for the Teutonic Order. The one artillery rule per player is in effect. So this is a 14th century bombard being brought here to the battle. And we also have some dismounted Teutonic Knights or dismounted Ritter Brutal, the 15th century Knights of the Teutonic Order as the shock infantry. And there were three shock per team. So a second unit here of the same dismounted knights and a third unit here. And these are the archer units, Prussian archers. Let's take a quick look at them. Now this was one of my first siege battles, guys. And I didn't realize that in the 15th century gunpowder rules, all of the hand gunners are just such a deadly unit. These archers though are not bad and they can arch their arrows over certain obstacles. That's it for the army of the Teutonic Order. One of the two attackers attacking this settlement. They're longtime allies here, the Kingdom of Denmark. We're gonna help them attack their rival, the Kingdom of Norway. So this is the King's bodyguard, and here's the King of Denmark. We can see with a straight edge sword, the one handed sword he's using, and the colors of Denmark here on this King's guard of his. Very heavily armored units. They do bring one unit of cav, the Danish Riddery. Here's their captain. More 15th century armor guys. As far as the shock infantry on this team, we do have the Danish noble longswords, led by a guy with a mace by the looks of it. And we have a couple more units, second unit of longswords here and a third unit of longswords here, rounding out those three shock infantries, shock infantry units. The Kingdom of Denmark here is commanded by Terminator and he did bring some hand gunners. So at least we have one player bringing those, that is great because the 15th century handguns are more accurate and just have better and longer range than the 14th century handguns. And these are very cool looking units, guys. And they can do a lot of damage if they get line of sight and are able to get some shots off. He does have some skilled spearmen. These are the Danish heavy spears. Very cool looking shields, with the colors of Denmark here. And a second unit of them here, third unit over here. And more infantry over here. It looks like he did bring three battering rams, all of which are positioned at one gate and two of which are manned. So some interesting choices here that will leave him short on siege towers, unfortunately, for the attackers. These are the Huskarls, so a medium melee unit from the 15th century, very cool. And back here we have some 
Huskar was in 14th century armor, so a little bit weaker unit in this late era battle, or 15th century battle. And here we have in the reserves one unit of heavy halberds. These are very expensive units and they can do a lot of damage if used well. He does have a second halberd unit again guys, I think it was two pole arm units per team. That's how we usually play. And this halberd unit is in the tower. Another unit of 15th century Huskarls and a unit of Huskarls in 14th century armor in these towers along with some 14th century spear Huskarls. So that is it for Denmark's army guys. Let's look at the defenders of this Oceanside Palace. Don't we all wish we had one of those? So as I mentioned, Teutonic Order and the Kingdom of Denmark are attacking the Kingdom of Norway and their allies, the Kingdom of Naples. Now the Kingdom of Norway is con um, controlled by Persona 5 Boy, was the name of the player. And he has a very interesting general, a 13th century bow unit. This is the general wearing 13th century armor. And that does look like the King of Norway to me. But his bodyguard's a little less glorious and a little weaker, I would say, than the other factions in this battle. Norway, with his three shock infantry held in the reserve, these are dismounted Hospitaller Knights. The Hospitallers do fight for multiple European armies. He is making use of them here, most of them with their two handed swords, or excuse me, two handed weapons, a lot of uh, two handed axes and war hammers that I see. The captain of this knight unit here with the mace. So that is the inner keep here, guys, of this settlement with some ramps here and holding Norway's reserves. And here are Norway's pole arms. He does have some Landevern pikemen. So these are 14th century pikes. They're going to be tough for anyone, even 15th century units to get through because those pikes are long, guys. And they can do, they can really pin units in place and hold narrow areas like these ramps here. So that is the inner keep for Norway. And he does have most of his army here in the mid city and on the walls. So these are some very lightly armored. They have 13th century armor uh, spears known as the Candleman here. He has some more of these light 13th century armor spears. Look at those small shields here compared to the Pavis. Um, really, we can see how just how small those shields are, not covering a lot of the body here. Open the missiles, but luckily they're behind the, wall, the walls here. Yet another unit of 13th century Cattleman Spears here. And a, another one here, just, just in case the attackers come down these stairs and win the walls. They're going to have to get through these spears in order to get into the inner keep. He does have a barricade set up here. And more light spearmen here to hold the barricade. On the walls, he has his archers. These are 14th century bows for Norway. Two units on this side. Lots of deploys, deployables here in front of the gate, caltrops and stakes. One unit here above the gate and a fourth unit on the side here. And he did bring a bastion catapult as well. The defenders being allowed bastion catapults in addition to their artillery. Um, their standalone artillery units. These are some 14th century uh, swords for Norway. The melee infantry, a lot of them actually having single-handed axes. And more of them here to hold the walls. Third unit here and a fourth unit here. So 14th century infantry to hold the walls for Norway. That is about it for Norway's army by the looks of it. So let's go to the last player in this battle, guys controlling the Kingdom of Naples. This is the Lion of Casterly Rock, great name. And here is his general, the King of Naples. He is wearing 14th century armor. So certainly more heavily armored than the King of Norway. With the Great Helm here, we can see the King of Naples and his one-handed sword and the colors of the King of Naples on his shield, Kingdom of Naples rather. And his King's Guard here, open-faced helms and some pretty good 14th century armor. And let's look at the rest of his army now. He does have some men-at-arms. Here on the side, he has some Pavi spears. 
just gorgeous colors on these shields, guys. Again, the historical research put into this mod is just fantastic. And the mod is totally free. Uh, the mod 1212 AD for Total War Attila. He does have 14th century um, man-at-arms here, which is a pretty good unit to hold in reserve. His artillery, a trebuchet here, very, very good choice of artillery for a siege. And his pole arms back here, the Italian mercenaries. Again, the 15th century pole arm units, guys, expensive, but worth it to hold the choke points. He does have another sword unit here in reserve. These um, medium swords from the 15th century, so they do have 15th century armor. And here's their captain with what looks like a warhammer and a buckler and a cool headpiece. All right. I use the definition of cool loosely here. So that is Norway, and this is the inner, that is, sorry, the uh, kingdom of Naples, and that is the inner keep here. This is the capture point, guys. If you hold this as an attacker for, um, I think it's about 100 seconds, you do win the battle. So this is the, the point that they are defending, located right in the center of the inner keep. And we've gone over his army in the inner keep. Let's finish off the mid city here. He does have some Genoese crossbows. These are 14th century, but they are heavy crossbows because of their large shields and the armor that they do have. And he actually brings more 14th century crossbows here. And that is mixed in with a unit of gunners. Kind of hard for me to spot, but here we do see some, oh, here's one right in the front here. That is a 15th century gunner. And these are certainly the units I would bring nowadays to a 15th century battle because these gunners can do a ton of damage, guys. But as I said, this was one of my first battles. I have no idea how it turned out since it was a while ago, but I do not appreciate the value of guns in the Middle Ages. I mean, looking back, pretty obvious, don't you think? Man-at-arms mounted as his heavy shock cavalry here. They're wearing 14th century armor, so they are not the heaviest unit on the field, but they should hold their own. And here we have more heavy crossbows from the 14th century for the line of Castor, the Rock, and Naples. In addition to his trebuchet, he did bring a bastion catapult here on the wall. And now to the outer walls, his defense is 15th century medium sword unit here. 14th century sword unit, more men at arms. 15th century light melee infantry. Very interesting unit. Look at this, 15th century. They got some of the barbute helmets and round wooden shields with some maces and warhammers. And another 14th century unit here, heavy melee infantry from the 14th century, more men at arms. At this gate, he does have 15th century spears. So that is a good choice to hold the gate with 15th century units since these gates are very, very important. And on this side, reinforcing that unit, he does have more light melee spadaccini. So the light melee infantry, and as well as some medium swords. These guys, a little heavier armored. So three big units near the gate. All right, guys, that is it for the army compositions. I believe we did get to everyone and everything that we can see right now, so let's start this battle without further ado. When we have taken this place and our enemies kneel in chains before us, when their women and children are the mercy of slavery. And it looks like that might be first blood. The enemy has engaged our ally. We have one of the bastion catapults, one of the crew taking a, taking a cannonball. And we see some pit trap deployables here in front as well for the defenders. So they are using all of their deployables and the bastion artillery that they can. And those are free guys. The defenders do get a little less money, but these things are free for defenders. And it looks like the Kingdom of Denmark firing the this trebuchet, trying to get that bastion catapult out of here. And the Teutonic Knights now have cleared this one with cannon fire. So looks like the surviving two crew members here are going to make a run for it. 
and that cannon does outrange the Bastion Catapult. Siege Tower is here with good range, but they're not going to do too much damage, especially not to any unit in, the, in that tower. And this Catapult has been hit, so the crew are going to make a run for it. He's also scoring a little hits on... No, he didn't touch this unit here. Yeah, this unit here looks like four of them have died. And you can see some of the bodies here that were just shoved off the wall. So, that is the opening salvos, guys, of this late era battle. We have some civilians trying to make a run for it here. And you gotta love the details in this game. The fleeing civilians before siege. The gates were shut to them, so they are gonna run now. While they still have a chance. And it looks like the trebuchet is still firing away. And I'm not sure what he's targeting. He is still targeting a bastion crew that is fleeing the castle. I think he's just sort of on auto fire, guys. At this point, let's fast forward. So our walls, since they do take a long time, so they get to the uh, the siege towers can get to the walls. And there are some shots coming in here on this fort tower by the trebuchet now. So he has actively picked a new target by the looks of it. All right, guys. Play it here in regular mode. And it looks like the King of Denmark, his towers are just about to reach the walls here, guys. We have Spear Huskarls in one tower and more Huskarls in these other two. But in this tower, he did send his 15th century halberd unit, which is not a good choice to go up on the wall since it cannot get set. And he is seemingly wasting ammo on this siege tower. Yeah, this fort, this arrow tower can fire some fire arrows, but he is using the wrong type of artillery here. Uh, the artillery fire should be uh, should be boulders that are being thrown here, not fire projectiles, since it's not a wooded tower. And he is going to run out of ammo quick. Look at that. He's less than 50%. But more importantly, we have first contact on the walls. And we have a unit, this unit of 15th century halberds, which has kind of been jammed between the two units here of Norwegian swords. So let's take a look at cinematic view, guys, as the battle begins on the walls. We do have a lot of arrow fire coming in from the defenders. And just landing here on the Danish halberds. Volley after volley of barrel that is concentrated grouping of attackers. And this is Norway with using this as cover here with just a lot of arrow fire coming on these halberds. And this is very unfortunate for the attackers to use a gold chevron unit that is a 15th century pole arm, very expensive unit on the wall and in such a vulnerable position just being rained down on with no support. Guys, the unit is already down 22 men. They're taking on a much weaker 14th century unit, but I don't think they're gonna win this fight on the walls. And now they're already down 40 odd men and just getting pelted and pelted here with, with more arrows. And if this unit can actually charge them from the back, this unit will break against an inferior unit. And it looks like that is what he's going to do. Charge from the back, and that should be enough to break these guys. More arrow fire coming down, and that they're surrounded, and they are going to break right here. Fully healthy unit with gold chevron just lost. The city is ablaze. Now we have the Teutonic Order here landing as well. Taking on some swordsmen for the King of Naples. You see the man of the Teutonic Order on the left here? 
and the infantry from Naples on the right. We're going to go on a cinematic view, guys, and just enjoy the battle. Another sword unit here, so good pressure. Attacking this 15th century sword unit from both sides. We have more swords here, targeting these 15th century light swordsmen here, who are starting to waver. Naples though, giving himself some good cover fire with some crossbows here, and bringing in the gunners. This is not going to be good for the attackers. Some bowmen being brought up to support here, and one unit already firing up. These guns are in position now. Opening fire. Up at these spears, and look at this, guys. The value of gunpowder. Only three units dead, but they are wavering already. Because the gun projectiles minus 13 morale in addition to the fire arrows from the tower with minus four. Just ruthless to use guns on medieval units here guys which is why a lot of players don't play with them but you gotta learn the hard way that's what i'm doing here so they do take a little while to reload so we're gonna give them that time here all the crossbows are firing away these walls here are not doing too much better the enemy gates are for the attackers, meanwhile, that trebuchet is missing some more shots. It did set this section of city on fire, so a good morale bonus for the attackers. But look at this, guys. It is almost out of ammunition, and it really hasn't accomplished anything because this tower is damaged to 90%, and it did not destroy the tower. So that tower is still here and still firing fire arrows. Look at that. at the attackers. He did take out a Bastion Catapult, but he could have done more or at least saved his ammunition. Kingdom of Denmark here having one unit kind of about to climb this tower by the looks of it. Or maybe not. wonder what they're doing. Alright. Some more battles here on the walls. Norway holding the stairs. The stairwell from, from the Danish attackers. We do have some more fire projectiles coming in, and I'm really not sure what he's trying to target. Maybe it's this unit here, but he has missed again. And he's certainly almost out of ammo now. You know, the Norwegians sending in the 13th century spears as one of their units is about to break, but doing pretty well holding the wall. Now we do have a unit of handgunners which have climbed the wall, but unfortunately they don't have any support. They're going to be running to buy some infantry from Naples, looking out for his ally here and cleaning up handgunners, guys. This is not good for the attackers at all to throw your ranged units into melee against melee units. These gunners have full ammo and they are already down three men and they're going to lose a lot more by the looks of it. Here we have this original unit breaking the attack from both sides, but it's now reinforced by another heavy melee infantry unit. The swordsmen are fighting from both sides. And it looks like there are now the first unit of dismounted Teutonic Knights are in the field and they've already managed to break one unit. We do have bowmen on the wall firing down, but they are losing the, the ranged war to the gunners. Gunners and the crossbowmen guys are too much for these bows. Just wiping units off the battlements with their gunpowder. And this unit wavering already as well. The damage from guns and they are breaking. They have more than two thirds. They managed to rally here, but for how long?
these men at arms here taking on Teutonic Spears, and it looks like they're going to be charged from the back by a unit of bows. Not sure. There, there are two units of spear on the wall, so they have surrounded. Commander oh, Ops were just a very tiny, shaking. wavering unit here. But the spears are going to attack these light melee infantry, which are holding the tower. And the Teutonic Order here are very unfortunately losing some, some Prussian archers. This unit now wavering and now actually attacked by infantry. Abbott managed to attack this man at arm unit in the rear by these Ritterbruder. They may have to support their archers here, and that they do by attacking the 15th century spears. And let's go into cinematic view, guys, here. Our men flee the field of battle. This is a shameful display. And it looks like, guys, that we have another unit of bows breaking to gunpowder. This is going to be extremely tough for the attackers to get anything done now. The gunpowder here controlling this section. And we do have that unit of gunners down about half the unit here. Looks like they were rescued by some noble longswords that took on this unit of infantry from Naples. But these expensive, expensive units from Denmark here, like these 15th century gold, triple gold chevron spears are breaking. And they, they were up against some very inferior units from wearing lesser armor. An entire unit has perished. So very unfortunate for the attackers. This unit as well here, triple gold chevron and, and down to about a third of the unit. And likewise over here, some 15th century Huskarls less than half a unit left. They did manage to clear a large section of the wall here. And we have another unit packing through the gate here and shaking, just leaving so many men to oil already. Candlemen, even though they are wearing inferior armor, they should hold. Running from the enemy! Prussian archers at least getting some shots off here with 33 kills. They're in tough trying to target those crossbows through the, the large shield, but they are getting some kills in. And possibly made these gunners withdraw due to their range advantage. Another missile range war going on over here. The Grandmaster was over here to rally the troops. Probably literally to drop a rallying cry on them. And the gunners again, firing away. Who are they targeting this time? They are targeting that first unit out of the three for the dismounted Teutonic Knights. They're gonna, they're gonna break that gunpowder morale uh, modifier is just too much. Prussian archers here getting to work on these crossbows, actually doing pretty well, and now switching targets, firing at the medium swords. But they're pretty low on ammo already. 56 kills for that bow unit so far. Now we do have a unit in the courtyard, the Noble Longswords have managed to get to the courtyard. They have won their section of the walls and have gotten to the courtyard. Rather than clearing the walls, they're, they're in the courtyard, so we'll see how that works out for them. It's going to cinematic view here as they take on some Norwegian infantry.
Norwegians with these the one-handed swords, some of them with spears, but all of them with shields. Danish warriors with two-handed long swords. It looks like we have the captain here of that unit who has possibly a warhammer here in this hand, a one-handed hammer. So the action now in the streets, guys, heating up. Alright guys, so we have this battle here for the gate, still under the control of the King of Naples, but slowly perhaps, the Danish who have taken massive casualties already are winning this part here near the gate. And these archers have taken their toll. 14th century bows, 26 kills, 58 kills, 40 kills, and 31 kills and counting for this unit. Norwegians are going to back off this section of the wall here, and their 13th century armored infantry are going to be pulling back. See the last unit of cavalry here, 13th century spears wavering. And after 81 kills, this Prussian, armor, Prussian archer unit, excuse me, is out of ammunition. So their next step is going to be being thrown into melee. They've already got their bucklers out. We'll see when that happens. These swords here exhausted from wavering against another unit of swords from the Kingdom of Naples, down to 42 men, holding steady so far. More infantry here holding the towers. And we do have the Teutonic Order here winning this side of the gate battle. So we'll see what happens here. And these archers out of ammo as well. 52 kills. And this is why, guys, you don't need troops, especially your triple speed. gold chevron shock infantry hanging around in the field because of reasons like this. Line of Casterly Rock, seeing a target and moving up his heavy shock infantry, guys. Let's ride with these knights. Let's see what develops here. You have some longsword units. They don't even have shield. And they actually have their backs turned. And they're going to be just absolutely bulldozed from the back. What were they looking at? Just a brutal charge here against this infantry, guys. Shaken now with massive casualties. Almost half the team is cleared out by this high arrow shot cavalry. But it looks like a second unit of longsword has come to relieve them. Shock Cavalry, 118 kills, very good work by the Lion of Casterly Rock. Picking up kills with the Cavalry and pulling out when it's no longer smart to just sit around and prolong melee. These archers now being thrown in here. You have 15th century medium archers. They can do a bit of damage in melee, so they're going to be thrown in here. They already have 91 kills Stand and, fight and are charging into a, units have returned to the a weakened unit here, so we'll see what happens. And over here we have the crossbow being thrown in. Against these Prussian archers here. So another archer unit with 60 kills that is just going to be used until they have nothing left to give. And the Cav have gone involved again, have this time taken this fresh unit down to 83 men with another big charge, using only six of their own. They're up to 155 kills, guys. And that is the second unit of shock infantry that they are just waiting for Denmark. We only get three each in this battle. Now the shock infantry is starting to take over. And the knights are going to flee. 
Mountain Heights. But that was only half the unit of the Mountain Heights. They took out about 40 of these knights. The dismounted, if not knights, and the dismounted noble longswords. So two very damaged units now, 69 out of 120 and 82 out of 120. I'm not sure. His third unit is out here by the walls. He does have one more the unit. Goes. Broken, I'm running for their lives. And while the Teutonic Order is still with two full, fully healthy dismounted Teutonic Knight units. We do have some crossbows that have sort of caught out the gate, but they do own the gate, which will drop oil on anyone. Here. Maybe they are trying to keep this general away to stop rallying cries. But this wall being held due to the gunpowder advantage by Naples. Courtyard here starting to be taken over by the Kingdom of Denmark. And he has captured the gate here. They're going to have to do something about these cow chops or the cavalry won't be able to come in. The whole unit has been destroyed! And the Teutonic infantry on the walls, those weaker units, they're just not doing well. One unit is wavering already. And the other unit at half strength, just above half strength. They're on the walls. The crossbow's taking a breather. They're ready to get involved. They have the big shields. They can go hand to hand. And we do have some gunners now. Lining up shock infantry in their sights. And look at that, guys. Robbing bodies. That unit down to 82 men now, 78 men now, 77 men, and both of these units are just 72 now. Oh my goodness, 65 and 71 men. We have two units that essentially have strength now. Nothing remains of this. And the gunners are going to continue to look for targets here that are within their firing range. This gate's still being held by the attackers. I'm not sure if this replay is what's going on with these, everyone sort of toggling in and out of this gate here, if that actually happened or if that's a replay artifact, but men at arms here. Only lost four men and are pulled back. Men have given up and are running for their lives. And it does look like the Teutonic Order here shifting forces to the right because why attack this gate? I mean, the forces that are on the wall is too late for them. Why attack the gate if the other gate is open? Just pour through the, the breach, and that's what they're going to try to do. Three full cab units here. The Ritter Bruder and the Grandmaster himself. Here is his unit. Are breaking up. And he is commanding his troops. Giving round rally and crack where needed. And that can help guys in the gameplay. But you can only do it every so often. Do another unit of spears here. The bombard with ammunition left over still. Two units of shock infantry and a unit of Prussian archer that is, um, that was uh, damaged and is shaken, but still has a lot of ammunition and fire. And this unit here, the other attacking artillery is out of ammunition, guys, with only 15 kills. So that is not good use of your artillery. You gotta do better than that as an attacker. But this gate is one. And the caltrops have been cleared. There's still some stakes here, guys, that if you're not careful and just send your cab in this way, you're going to lose some cab without even realizing where you lost them. And on this side, too. So 
Somebody's got to clear that out still. But the attackers are slowly shifting and are, looks like they're going to launch the attack from this side of the, of the inner city, of the mid-city rather, that they're already setting up here. It's a hole. We do have some defending archers here, sent in to take their toll for the defenders to be able to take their toll here in mid-city. We do have one or two shots left, but they're being... Nope, they are going to stop before that charge. And it looks like they may fire point blank at these Danish spears here. Posturing going on, but they are actually targeting a different unit. Maybe this Albert unit here, since these men don't have shields, or the spears back here, hard to tell. Yeah, oh, they are firing at these spears here. Try to catch them looking or not looking here. Some arrows into the halberds and some over here. And the gunners are firing, but they're firing through their own men. At these bows. Now the bows have no ammo left. And as a result of friendly fire, there's actually a minus morale penalty for these men here. Though it is only temporary. Now the bow bomb here firing again. Possibly one of their last volleys here. Still coming down on those spears, but they're in. They do have their shields up. Haven't really taken too many casualties yet. The defenders are pushing up their bow bond here too, realizing that they do have time and are letting, letting go some arrows here and they are targeting these halberds and three have already died. So this is the last bow arm unit for the Kingdom of Denmark. And they are very heavily armored, so some of them are just going to taunt these archers here. But not a good idea to just think them out in the open like this. And these bow bond here will very happily use up the last of their ammo from a safe distance. This unit with 32 kills. 27 kills over here and 41 kills over here. Very good numbers for a lightly armored bow unit. And 58 over here, very good numbers. Looks like they are pretty much out of ammunition now. Last shot here could be. And after losing another helper, these spears are going to come in and say, and get into Testudo formation. And that'll protect themselves as well as the halberds behind them. Now, I'm not sure what Denmark's doing. He is advancing his halberds. They were in a great position here behind the Testudo wall, inaccessible to, the, to most of these missiles, but they're going to advance now. They lose two men in the process of pushing through here because of the arrow fire. So it's a ton of quarter through now. The artillery here, the artillery crew are being told to just rush in at this stage. As essentially cannon fodder. And it looks like the attackers have sent in their bull bond here with 32 kills. And now they have no arrows left, so there's no room in the inner team for years. Then the city or die. Well, it's a cinematic mode here. The halberds are oh, that's a brutal kill. The halberds are having an easy, easy time, and the bull body are going to break and run here. But they are slowing the attackers down. The really, what matters is 21 minutes left, guys. Mid city's slowly starting to fall here. And we have the Ritter Bruder moving in. And looks like, unfortunately, probably taking some casualties on 
this side of the the, of the stakes here that were still left over. So I think they were at 60 and 59 men before coming in. One unit's still at 59. One unit at 55. So about five knights were lost there. But a good charge here into the well, wandering, they do great. And they're going to charge through into this next unit. And a better charge now into this third bow wandering unit. And they are going to break them. So the cavalry with some moves here, breaking another bow unit. circling. Looks like it went the long way around. Let's ride with these nice guys as they try to take a unit from the rear. That is this Norwegian unit here that has used up their missiles and are in hand to hand. These Teutonic Knights have no mercy and they're going to just ride them down. Have our own answer, guys. Just crush this unit. The, the remnants of this unit will get sandwiched between some Danish spears and Teutonic Knights, and that is not a good position. They have now broken around it, so very good work by this Teutonic Knight unit. 70 kills, only one man down. And it's unfortunate that in Attila we can't end in a total war 12 12. We just cannot see how many kills these arrow towers have. But the artillery is firing away with some big shots here. It looks like they did take out some hand gunners. 10 men down in this unit. I believe this is a replay artifact here with these people bond here because there's units moving through them and they are using losing men, but I don't think that unit was actually there, guys. It is going to affect the replay a little bit. The Noble Longsword's here. Last unit, 105 men left, already 50 men down, zero kills. And here we go, trebuchet fire. Big hits by the trebuchet guys. Cooking up some hand gunners here. That is good considering it's a very expensive with full channels. Looks like the King of Norway and his lightly armored bodyguard are actually going to be firing away here using some of their missiles. And why not? They can actually target the gunners over here too by lobbing their shafts over these buildings, which are blocking off sight for gunners and crossbow. And that's who they're targeting instead of this spear unit, which is a testudo formation that can absorb some shots and their shields. City burning over here. And it looks like the King's bodyguard is taking some damage now from the trebuchet. Maybe this roof collapsing here as well. They're down to 16 men. Unfortunately for the attackers, the attackers are now only with 15 minutes and 45 seconds left. Teutonic Order finally being able to push some units in. That one unit of missiles left. Trebuchet firing away at the bombard here. The bombard also firing away. And landing some good hits here on this unit of spearmen. But is it going to be enough guys with just over 15 minutes left and trebuchet fire coming in?
And it looks like they did damage one of these cannons. The bomb are down to just three out of four now. Firing away at the trebuchet, and that one looked like it went right through this artillery unit. And he's getting his gunners out of the way. That is an expensive unit with already 170 kills. So he is keeping that for, for the final push, it looks like. The balance of power, guys, here is still relatively even, but the defenders now with more men than the attackers. That is never a good sign for the attackers. Although in this battle, it looks like they started out that way, but the difference is now growing even more. And another shot direct into the shock infantry of the Danish army. Just a brutal, brutal shot by the trebuchet in Naples. 71 kills now. Luckily, this little squad is now broken. So we can get back to the inner keep now being assaulted. And is that the king Enemy of unit, Denmark enemy. charging the slight spear unit with this depleted king's guard? And there he is, king of Denmark. Leading the charge from the front, and here comes some shock infantry as helping to lead their spearmen. 13th century armor. Who else is in here? We've got some more Danish spears and knights, but the King of Denmark is now breaking. With looks like four men. Did he survive? There he is. He, sur he somehow survived that suicide charge. The enemy's tower has been destroyed. And the capture point has been taken. So the attackers just recklessly here could have lost the battle if they lost that king. The bomb are providing some cover fire here. With this unit of shock infantry moving in. The Teutonic archers are laying down arrows, but there's just too few of them. More cannon fire here and nailing some shock infantry. Runners in loose formation firing away. The attackers are now doing some good things, but is it going to be enough? And this King's Guard, I mean, he should just be in a bubble wrap right now, but he's riding through fire arrows and he's wavering and he will break very, very soon through the losses of his bodyguard if he's not careful. The defending trebuchet firing away. And that was a bit of friendly fire. But the handgunners are about to break and facing some very heavy fire from the defenders. Now this stairway has been completely cleared by the Teutonic Order's artillery. but perhaps only temporarily. And the men-at-arms come out again. But a big shot by the artillery. The defenders and nailing the handgunners. This unit now being turned into mush and again starting the waiver. And another large shot coming down and taking out even more men. Prussian archer unit just all now, as well as these these handgunner units, the last two. Teutonic order now stepping in here with some cavalry, and the gunners lay down the fire. We do have the battle on the side here. There is a back entrance to this inner keep, guys. 
that goes through here. But it's blocked off by some more candlemen here, taking off Teutonic Knights and Spears. By the looks of it here, we have two groups of knights, or a group of knights and a group of men at arms that may face off. But the attackers really trying to press through. The defenders trying to hold on with just under 10 minutes left. Another capture point down here as the tower falls. Knights being thrown in against spears and spear wall formation. Not good for the attackers to be down to such desperate measures, guys. When you're running out of time, desperate measures is all you got. Here we have some heavy hoppers pushing up. And it looks like general is here his guest you kind of on this ramp and that is it for the king of Denmark he has died the knights here the dismounted knights are pressing in it looks like the Teutonic order has managed to clear this ramp and this hill but can they make it in more 13th century spears are holding the block and a big artillery hit on these units which are clumped up together. So here we go guys. This is from the point of view of these knights. Are they going to charge? Looks like we got the wrong unit there. Yes, they will charge. And that depleted knight unit has charged these camelmen and cleared most of them out and they will waver, but that won't do them much good because right behind them, they have some pikes and they have gotten set. So the horsemen are wisely going to pull out. It looks like the trebuchet got more of them. And we're going to throw dismounted knights here at these pikemen. Now the pikes can also hold against dismounted knights. They're not going to do quite as well as they would against horses. But they did get set. Most of them have managed to get set. They're going to hold them in place. Some of the knights are going to break through. That's going to be wild guys. and only six and a half minutes left here in this battle. Denmark is throwing everything they have. Meanwhile, more shots from the trebuchet. And if you could pick off a knight there. And just a, a massacre here at this ramp. The men at arms from Naples, surrounded by Teutonic Knights, some on horseback and some on foot. The enemy general is fallen. We do have another general down, guys. That looks to be the Norwegian general who got too close to the action. And that is unfortunate for Norway. But overall, their odds are still looking pretty good. King of Naples is still alive and well with all 38 of his King's Guard. Now the Teutonic Order just throwing more men here at these shock infantry. And their ballista crew are, are in here now. Their, their bombard crew, excuse me, with 88 kills on that bombard. Pretty good numbers, all things considered. The pikes here, though, are going to be a tough, tough obstacle for the Teutonic Order. And it may just be too much. 
we're looking at it the other way, too little, too late. Or the Teutonic Order and trying to take the settlement here. And the final units of shock infantry now involved for the Teutonic Order. One unit in the back, here battling away with the against pikes, and another fresh unit here taking on the men at arms from Naples. But the defenders have managed to erect another blockade here on top of this ramp. That is a pike unit being blocked with Pavi spears in the front here, just stacking. And that's just going to be very tough to break through in four minutes, guys. And these pole arms here as well hold in at this choke point. The remainder, the tattered remnants of this Danish army just trying to push through here. Remember, their general has died, which is a morale penalty. And they're pushing uphill against the pole arms. That is going to be very tough, guys. The defenders look like they have things well in hand here. The dismounted knights look like they've, bro they've broken this unit of shock infantry. Enemy units have been rallied. Here we are on this ramp here, and a bunch of wavering, depleted units here with Denmark. Pushing up against some Italian mercenaries, which are still pretty fresh. Tonic Order now throwing in their Bombard crew. 96 skills on that Bombard crew. But their knights in the back here are not doing well, guys. They haven't really managed to kill too many pikes, only 19 pikes have died. This unit is down to 40 men, and the spears are down to 81 men. And I don't think they'll get through here, guys. It doesn't look like that. And it looks like they've dismounted their knights and thrown them in against Poland. And so that's the best thing we can do. Two units of, of knights now dismounting and throwing, being thrown in against pole arms try to aid this Danish push. They do break some spears. But the defenders responding. Naples throwing in his 15th century swords to help them. Yes, riding your cavalry into pole arms is not a good idea. Artillery crew battling here, but they're up against the immovable obstacle. And it looks like the Teutonic Order should really advance these knights with just two minutes left. And the Grand Master may be getting involved now. At the last moments of this battle, guys. The attack on the back gate has failed. This unit rallied, but now we're the field of battle. The spears being pushed through and, and also breaking. Nobody getting through those pikes. We have some units here from Naples hanging around, but again, I think that these are bug, not actually there. What is actually here is the Grand Master's bodyguard. They're pulling in as quick as they can. And the King of Naples is going to be pulled into action here, guys. Black Day. Our ally has been routed. And the Danes break completely. The men are losing faith. Here comes the King of Naples, and he's going to be stuck in combat with these knights hiding around the, the edge here. And the Grandmaster will get one last charge for glory, but it's going to be too late, too little, too late, guys. And that is it. The 
Tonic Order did not manage to pull off this win in time. They have lost, along with the Kingdom of Denmark, in this two versus two. Close battle, guys, but very good work by the defenders. Some very good teamwork working together as a unit. And there you have it, guys. No stats available this time, but we'll see you next time.